Do you suffer from a leaky rear end? Are you having to clean up more often than you'd like? Does your leaky rear end embarrass you in front of friends or family? Do you lack the confidence to take long trips due to fear of a leaky rear? Well, suffer no more. We have a product guaranteed to solve your leaky rear end problems. Introducing the Leaky Rear Fixer Kit. Guaranteed to fix your leaky rear or your money back. Call now and the first five callers will receive a free autographed picture of my leaky rear. Available for nine low payments of $29.95 plus $784 shipping and handling. Not available in California or any other state. If you haven't figured it out yet, this is not a real product. Do not call, do not email, but feel free to leave product reviews in the comments below. It is finally time to update the vent on my final drive. A little bit of a story if you've seen my other video. The final drive pretty much had to be rebuilt. It needed a new outer cover. There were no silver ones available, so I put on a black one, and uh, that's it's now a tuxedo drive. So yeah, it's really upscale when you're riding, it fills it. But it still pukes oil. Now, the final drive actually did not puke oil. I was surprised with this one. Uh, until I rebuilt it, removed the vent to put it on the new one, I discovered that someone had plugged the vent up with RTV. So I cleaned the RTV out, put the vent in the new casing. Of course, it pukes oil like all of them do. So I'm going to fix that with what you see here today. I have a uh, banjo bolt that is M8 with 1.25 thread. I have the banjo fitting for a 3 16 inch hose. This is, I'm gonna be using a 3 16 inch uh, fuel hose because this is oil. So I wanna make sure I get something that'll be a little resistant to the heat that this will generate, a couple of hundred degrees at most. And oils, if they get in there, won't uh, deteriorate it. I'll need some zip ties, uh, channel locks. I got a 12 millimeter, which is for the banjo bolt and a 14 millimeter, which is for the vent. Now, if you've never removed one of these vents before, it's actually designed to come out. Uh, you don't have to destroy it or beat it out. Hopefully nobody red Loctited it for you. I know this one isn't because I just put it back on. Uh, but this metal cap actually comes off. If you grab up near the top, keep your pliers fairly open, grab near the top so it's harder to crush kind of wiggle and turn and pull and oop, it'll come right off. Okay, so now we got the cap off. The vent that's left has two flat sides on it and is 14 millimeters, thus the 14 millimeter wrench. And if you take that, and again, I just put this back on here so I didn't use any um, RTV or uh, thread locker or anything like that. And I'm just gonna unscrew this and take it out of the final drive. And that will leave us what we need to install the banjo bolt. Now I like the banjo bolt idea because it lets me adjust the direction of the nipple that's coming out. It puts it at a 90 degree angle instead of straight up, which I find preferable. And it lets me adjust that angle while still keeping the bolt tight. I can tighten it back down. Um, I did have one on my wife's rig for a little while, but what happens, um, you know, you tighten it down, everything's good, but it's pointing this way. And you wanna pull it back up here, well now you're loosening it. So the banjo bolt just takes care of that. So I got that out. Uh, give me a second to get a paper towel and just wipe that clean. The banjo bolt I did paint black. These did not come black. Um, I painted them with a black enamel and put them in a oven at a couple of hundred degrees for 10 minutes to bake it on. So that, that should provide a good finish. I just couldn't find them black. If you can find them black, buy them, but I, I didn't. Um, again, this is M8, 8 millimeter with 1.25 thread. Now, on the forums or in different places, 
I've seen this reported as an M10 with 1.25 thread. I don't know if that was a typo in the write-up that I was looking at or if some of the final drives are different. Maybe the newer ones are M10. I, I don't know. But both of mine are 2017s, and both of them were uh, M8. So I'm going to give this a quick tightening just to there. And I did go ahead and use the copper washers. It's not going to take any pressure or anything. I'll check them for tightness. I don't think I'm going to need Loctite on these. Uh, if I do, I'll add it, but I, I don't think that's going to be necessary. So now I need to put the hose on and route it. And this should still be loose enough to turn. It is. So I just push that on, no clamp or anything. Again, this is just a vent. There's no pressure. And my plan is to run this here. Well, you know, I really don't have a plan. <laughs> um, I'll probably just run it up here and, and drop it over this area and just let it hang down. Uh, maybe zip tie a loop in it like a snorkel. I'm not sure. On the retro, or excuse me, this is the retro. On the CT, my wife's rig, I'll just show you. Um, I just brought it up and put it uh, like this. And, and most people have CTs or gear up, so this is more relevant to you most likely. I just went around the corner, left it on the swing arm, came up, zip tied it a couple of times, and I just ran it up behind the side panel and let it hang down. Um, you're not going to get any oil or anything out of it, um, but it does let the drive vent pressure and release vacuum. And you can see uh, this one's been on here a little while. Works great, no problems with it. And the previous owner had actually put one on with just a brass nipple that he had forced to screw in because it was standard threads instead of metric. Fortunately, it was soft enough. It didn't damage any threads. And it stuck straight up, and I was never happy with that. I'm much happier with how this looks and with how it's laid out on the bike. So let me uh, route the hose on my retro, and then I'll bring you back and show you what I decided to do. Okay, so I made my decision here. I thought about running it up along this rail and out into the tag, but that just looked ugly, a little bit too far. So I opted instead to come off this direction. There's enough play here for the swing arm to go, and I left some excess. If I'm wrong, once I jack it up, I can, I can pull some back if I had to, but I just ran it uh, right at the outside here. And on the retro, I just opted to drop it uh, right in front of the fuse box here, which is attached on a braid. You can see it, I can pull it out there Get to it. Okay. So again, I just left a little excess, enough it would tuck. And uh, that's the solution that I have. Um, videoing took longer than doing the install. Uh, you know, this is a 10 minute job. It's really easy to do. And, you know, I, I also do like to have the hoses pointed down when they're done so they act like a snorkel. So, you know, situation you're, you're not gonna get water going down in it. Not that I'm gonna be, you know, uh, I'm no Chad. Uh, look that up on Soviet steeds and it'll make sense. So I, I'm not gonna end up with, you know, water up to my seat. But, um, yeah, when it's raining or whatever, it just makes sure no water gets into the final drive. But this is an easy upgrade and, you know, really simple, simple to do. As for where I got the parts, ultimately, uh, the local Napa would have had them if they had had them in stock. Uh, they had empty bins for them. They had this huge box of banjo bolts and adapters, and they were all empty but like two. Uh, I live kind of out in a rural area, and they were like, we can order them for you. I said, well, heck, if I'm going to do that, I'll just go to Amazon, which is what I did, and I bought them on Amazon. Ten-minute install. I did get the hose from Napa. Um, what I got needed three sixteenths-inch fuel hose. If it's not chemical resistant, it the oil could react with it and uh, cause it to weaken. 
Uh, also, this does get hot. Now, not hot, hot like a motor or 350 degrees or anything, but I measure 125, 150 degrees on the final drive uh, when I'm checking their temperature. So this is going to get very warm, and that plastic hose may loosen and deform. I don't anticipate no clamps being a problem. If it is, I'll update you, but I'm just, the pressure fit's pretty good, so I'm just going to leave them as a pressure fit. I've got a thousand miles on the new rebuilt final drive already. We went over and did some traveling. You may have noticed I have a new sheepskin seat cover. I'll try to do a video on that and tell you why I stopped using my old one, uh, provided I still like this one. I literally have 30 miles using the sheepskin, so I don't have an opinion on it yet. Other than my initial opinion is, yeah, it, it's comfortable. Not much else. The the 15W four coil is nice, 300 milliliter, uh, 390 milliliters per fork, if you're curious. Um, and I used 15 weight Motul fork oil, which is a bump up from the 10 weight that came in it originally. It firmed the front end just a little bit. I'm not entirely sure I like it being firmer, <laughs> but I'm kind. Of, it, it's it's very subjective. Um, but the tin did feel a little soft to me. I, it was a little, you know, giving in the front end. So I think I'm going to stick with 15W. But that's the vent. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, and if you got a question, post it in the comments.